much more controlled environment. So augmented reality has a ton of applications and training. And then finally, if we move on to service, this is an example from a company called Sysmex. Sysmex makes um, lab, uh, blood analyzers, so you would find this in a medical lab. And in this case, uh, their blood analyzers are already connected. They're connected actually with ThingWorks, and they actually ship with an iPad. And in the, it has replaceable reagents that you would put into this to, to perform the different tests. Now this lab technician is using the iPad here to um, address an issue with the machine. Uh, it needs to be cleaned. So he's run an automatic cleaning cycle, but it failed. So normally he would call Sysmex, and they would roll out a service technician. But what Sysmex has done is they have provided him with a simple service procedure that he can perform using augmented reality to get the machine back up and running. So you see here he scanned a marker. He's being told he's got to turn off the power. He can't proceed to the next step until the power is turned off. We're leveraging that connectivity. And then he has walked through the simple procedure. As you watch this, I think you'd all agree it's relatively straightforward. It'd be somewhat difficult to articulate with words and individual pictures. It's very clear, it's very intuitive when it's presented in this fashion. So a couple of pretty interesting things have happened here. The lab technician is pretty happy. His machine is now back up and running within minutes. Sysmex is happy, A, because he, he's happy, and B, because they didn't have to roll a truck out to perform this procedure. In fact, using technology like this, they've been able to double the number of customers that they're able to take care of per service technician because the customers can do more of this kind of work on themselves. So a lot of great use cases, and AR is transforming the way that we work, okay? It's transforming the way that we're trained. It's allowing us to capture knowledge digitally, including thanks to things like remote, uh, remote support, remote assistance. So you can imagine in any one of these scenarios where I had a pre-authored sequence, what if I didn't? What if I needed help from a colleague? I could use augmented reality, share with them what I see, and then they could mark up their tablet in some maybe safe and secure environment, and I could see those augmentations and get my job done a lot quicker, okay? In the age of um, an aging workforce, where a lot of that tribal knowledge is retiring and doesn't want to be in dangerous environments, that's a pretty compelling tool. And then finally for recruitment, you know, we work with a lot of large industrial customers. 25-year-old graduate from MIT shows up to work at a large industrial company, and the first thing they see is a 300-page manual on how they're going to take care of the products they're going to look after. Not too, uh, not too engaging, right? But you present a tool like this to them, and that's much more compelling. So all this stuff is great, right? What's the problem? It's not easy, right? Until now, it's been pretty hard to do these types of things. It requires a lot of skill, requires specialized tools. It takes a lot of time to create an augmented reality experience. And augmented reality is a new medium of communicating. It's a new way of working. And we know how to create mobile apps and web apps and desktop apps. Do you know how to create ARFs? You probably need to iterate a little bit. You need to be able to work through them, through them repeatedly, right? And with these tools, it's hard to do that. It's hard to reuse existing assets. How many, um, how many people here are familiar with AR? How many people have done work with AR, okay? Uh, you're using Unity, right? You're using, you're using those kinds of tools, right? Um, working with CAD data and those kinds of tools can be pretty challenging, right? There's no understanding of product structure and any of those kinds of things. Jim talked about the explosion of apps. Leveraging IoT data, right? You basically gotta stitch all this stuff together. So these are the problems that we're thinking about at PTC. And one of the things that we've done is we have leveraged this great Vuforia technology and we have introduced something called Vuforia Studio. I'm gonna mute this and I'll talk to you about it. So in one minute, we're going to use Vuforia Studio, we're gonna create a project, we're gonna incorporate some data that we already have, this is 3D data, we're gonna place it on a thing mark. This is that marker that you'll see. Um, and this does two things. It provides unique identification and it allows us to place the AR experience. The data that we're gonna bring in here is a relatively simple CAD model, but it's several megabytes of data that we compress significantly. 
about 100 times so that we can easily stream it out to your, out to your phone. We're going to place this thing exactly where we want. We're going to locate the marker. In this case, we're going to put it on the floor of this experience. We're going to give that uh, type in the uh, the unique um, the unique identifier. You know exactly what that what that marker is, uh, so that we can print it out. That marker has unique encoding in it. You can think of it a little bit like a QR code or a barcode. Uh, and then we're going to publish this thing up to the cloud. Okay. Then we're going to take our mobile device, iOS, Android, Windows, and we're going to use a tool called ThingWorks View. And with ThingWorks View, when we scan that marker. We're presented with all of the experiences that are associated with that unique number. And in this case, we've created a simple tabletop experience. Okay? It's that easy. So we're really focused on allowing you to easily reuse your, your, your CAD data, your 3D assets that you have. And it doesn't have to be CAD data. It could be laser point scan, scan data. We can offer against a picture or a 360 degree picture if you'd like. But we're really focused on allowing you to reuse 3D, incorporate animations, and incorporate IoT data. Interesting? OK. So let me spend just another couple of minutes and show you how we do some of these things, and then tell you how you can get involved. So there's a few different parts to the equation. Yeah, right? There's an authoring environment called ThingWorks Studio. This is part of the ThingWorks platform. This is where you create the experiences. You then publish them up to the cloud. If you're a big enterprise and you want to have them on site, we give you the ability to do that too. They can be on-prem. We have a capability called ThingWorks View. This is how you consume these. We call this a, a Thing Browser. It's a universal browser. And when you scan these marks, and we use the marks today. Eventually, you won't need the marks. We can identify through RFID or GPS or Beacon. And we can um, use CAD, for example, to perform the tracking. But today, the markers work very well. That presents to you the various experiences. You pick on the, you want, the one you want, and that data is dynamically delivered to you. So a few different stages. We create this. This is intended to be a codeless environment. If, um, if you want to go do this as quickly as I just showed you, you can do that. Now, these experiences are JavaScript, HTML5, and the Euphoria SDK. You want to customize them. You want to tailor them. You can go do that. But the idea is make it very, very easy to get this content created. Again, they're published up to, up to a 